So if I were to ask you right now what you think a server looks like, some huge server racks with tons of cabling would come to mind from a huge tech company like Amazon or Google. But the reality is you can create your own at-home storage server for free in under 10 minutes. You don't need any extra software. Windows will offer you all the tools you will need to get your server up and running. So in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you how to do. This server will allow you to store and transfer files between other computers on your home network, which is super convenient and something I use quite a bit for large file transfers. To start, all you really need is a computer running Windows that has some form of storage. The specs don't really matter because you don't need something really high end to get this server up and running and to transfer files, something like an old office PC or really just any old computer you have lying around will be just fine. I'm using this computer that I thrifted from Goodwill a few years back. The specs aren't great. It's got an i7-3770K. It doesn't even have a graphics card in it, which is something you actually won't need for this server. And it just has a hard drive in it. I opted for a huge four terabyte hard drive, which actually aren't that expensive nowadays, but honestly, you could do this with even as something as little as a 100 gigabyte SSD. You can even do this right off of your boot drive if you have, let's say, a 240 gigabyte SSD. You just have Windows or some other files on this old computer that you will be using. You have some extra space. You can utilize that space to transfer files and store files. Now for the host of this server, you don't want to choose something like your main computer that you would use for gaming, school, or content creation, anything like that, because the host PC will have to be running while you are transferring files. Ideally, you want a separate computer that's going to be the host that you can send files to and that other computers can connect to and take those files off. Like I said before, the amount of storage you decide to have on your host really depends on the size of the files that you're going to be transferring. I would say a terabyte hard drive would be perfect because the speed isn't necessarily going to be a factor in this since it has to go over your network anyway. Most home networks have a speed of around 100 to 200 megabytes per second, and that is the general speed of what a hard drive will offer you, so that's why I'm suggesting that. So now that you have your host computer and the storage that you want, now it's time to actually hop into Windows and get everything configured. So you wanna hop on your host computer that you've chosen and go to advanced sharing settings by typing that into the search bar then you want to select make this device discoverable for all the network types. This is important since that is how other computers will be able to find and connect to the storage server. So you want to make sure those changes are saved and then head over to your file explorer. In file explorer, create a folder to share and have it located in the drive you plan on using as your storage device. This could be your boot drive if you have enough extra space or it could be any other drive that you have connected to your host computer. Then you want to right click on that folder and select share with. In the panel that pops up, select the drop down menu and then select everyone and give them read and write privileges. Make sure to save your changes and then on the next page is the drive address for the shared folder. You want to copy or remember this because this is needed in order to connect other computers to this server. Once you actually input this address into another computer on your network that you want to connect to this host, it will remember it, but you have to obviously have that in your head or on a piece of paper so that you can connect. Now with it configured on the host, you wanna hop on a computer you wish to connect to the server. Repeat the sharing settings changes you already completed on the host and now do them on this client machine. Now go to this computer in File Explorer and go to the top where it says Map and Network Drive. Keep the drive letter as default and then paste or type in the drive path of the shared folder. If you did everything correctly, it should connect to the computer and show up under your drives as a shared drive. You can now upload or download files from that server drive with other devices on the network, but you will need to repeat this connection process for every device you would like to connect. You can see in the share folder that there is a video file, and that's actually a screen recording that you just watched in this video, and I'm transferring that from my host computer, which I made the recording on, to my main computer, which I will be editing it on. And there you go. Now you have a fully functioning storage server for your home network. I know that was actually probably easier than you thought it would be, 
and it was a lot easier than I thought it would be when I first completed this for my home network, but it's gonna offer some really nice flexibility when it comes to transferring files and be really convenient for you. So I hope you take advantage of this and use it for yourself. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Nate with another hardwired review video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any feedback or questions for me. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.